Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel, Amipti Super Session by Dr. Jarkos. Today I'll be doing J. H. Allen Volume 2, Complication of Psychosis in the First Stage. Complications in the primary stage are few and seldomly dangerous. So Dr. J. H. Allen says that the complications in the primary stage, they are few and they're less dangerous. Cystitis, cystitis of a mild form is often present. Severe form develop only in cases where local treatment is employed. These may go on even to the abscess above the neck of the bladder or in the urethra. Some of the abscesses were followed by hemorrhages. So he says that the complications on the primary stage are very few and they're less dangerous. The most common one is cystitis and it will develop where local treatment is employed. And what happens when local treatment is employed? It may have an abscess formation above the neck of the bladder and even followed by hemorrhages. Onoral orchitis are seen in cases that have been tempered by the use of some local medicament. So you may also get a complication of gonoral orchitis, especially when the case has been misused or mistreated with some local medicament. Even in the ordinary uncomplicated cases where a tubercular diathesis is present in the patient, gonorrhea is slow and difficult to eradicate from the organism. So Dr. J. H. Allen says that when the tubercular diathesis is present at the background, and even in a simple uncomplicated case, when a tubercular diathesis is present in the background, it is difficult to eradicate it from the organism. That is, the gonorrhea will be difficult to get eradicated because of the tubercular diathesis which is present in the background. If the discharge is not re-established, a cure cannot be made. So whatever separation had taken place, the energy has to be transferred. It cannot be destroyed. As you all know, energy cannot be destroyed. Its manifestations can only be changed. So therefore, if a cure is to be made, the discharge has to be re-established. The organism may die from the morbid processes and changes dependent upon the stasis due to suppression. So in severe forms also, when suppression takes place and the, and the discharge is not re-established, then the person may also die. Sometimes the diseases after suppression will develop secondary or tertiary symptoms at once. So Dr. J. H. Allen says that when the disease has been suppressed, immediately the secondary or the tertiary symptoms will also develop. It may take years to manifest itself in any marked degree upon the life force. So it may take years also to manifest itself. The first stage, the first great change with the psychosis produces when suppressed is to attack the blood. So the first main change is that it affects the blood when psychosis is suppressed and it produces anemic states and conditions when it is present in a considerable degree. However, cataract conditions come after a while and rheumatism, gout, and even bright disease may develop. So initially, it will attack the blood, causing anemic states. Later on, it may affect the joints, causing rheumatism, gout, or even the bright disease. Diabe the diabetes and, and, the, and kinder disease, diseases have often their, their uh, parentage in a suppression of disease in this primary stage. So diabetes and also other family-related diseases, kinder meaning family-related diseases, also have their parentage in suppression. So, and it, it may also be seen in the primary stage. Informations follow in organs and in soft tissues. Fibrous changes in, in any organs are to be met with until the whole organism is overcome by the death dealing process due to suppression. So more the suppression, more the complications will take place. So information follows in the organs and in soft tissues and also fibrous changes may be seen. Bubos are sometimes present as in the case of the syphilis. They may be of a separative or non-separative variety, yet they seldomly come under, yet they seldomly come under unless suppressive measures are employed. So bubos also may be present as in the case of syphilis. It could be separative or non-separative in nature. They are usually due to stasis of the disease in its primary stage or the beginning of the secondary stage. Prostatitis and hemorrhoids come on, come on later in the disease. So the next complication could be prostatitis and hemorrhoids. Even articular rheumatism is apt to develop after suppression. 
it is relieved by re-establishing of the original discharge either from the urethra or by the return of the old suppressed leukorrhea. So when you are treating such suppressed cases or such complicate or such cases wherein complication of psychosis has taken place in the primary stage, then you have to re-establish the discharge either from the urethra or from the return of the old suppressed leukorrhea or any other discharge for the matter of fact. Now we will take up secondary psychosis. So we have seen the complications of the primary psychosis. Now we will see the complications of the secondary psychosis. The secondary and tertiary stage bears about the same relation to the first stage of syphilis. So the secondary stage of psychosis, it has the same relation to the first stage of syphilis. When syphilis is treated homeopathically, we find but few secondary lesions and the tertiary stage is, is conspicuously absent. The tertiary symptoms do not develop. So he says that, Dr. J. H. Allen says that when syphilis is treated homeopathically, we find but a few secondary lesions and the tertiary stage is totally absent. Now, or, or, it, or there are no symptoms develop in the tertiary stage. The same thing may be said for the psychosis. So Dr. J. H. Allen says the same thing applies for psychosis. When treated homeopathically, there are no secondary and tertiary developments. Thus, all secondary and tertiary symptoms are a result of poor treatment. So, why do secondary and tertiary symptoms develop? They are a result of poor treatment or inadequately treated cases or cases which have been suppressed to a great degree. It becomes necessary for us to know that the disease in all the stages of the development. So, for that, the physician should be knowledgeable with the different stages of the development of the disease or the development of the myosin. Each myosin has a different stage, the primary stage, secondary stage, tertiary stage. So the symptoms of these stages should be known to the physician. The transmission of the psychotic virus, the result will depend largely upon the stage in which it was transmitted. So when the psychosis is there, it will depend upon what stage the psychotic myosin is in, as a result of which the symptoms will be different from the different stages. The symptoms that follow and the disease that makes the appearance will correspond in some degree to the stage and the age of the primary infection. That is, if the virus is transmitted during the primary stage, the symptoms developed in the newly infected one will be primary symptoms, or those found in gonorrhea of the first stage. So, if the virus is transmitted in the primary stage, then you will get the symptoms of the primary symptoms will develop or those found in the first stage of gonorrhea. If the disease is transmitted in the secondary stage, there will be no primary symptoms to speak of. We must look into the mysteries of the myosin and find out whether it is sora, syphilis, and psychosis. So, if the disease is transmitted in the second stage, there will be no primary symptoms to speak of, but there will be those symptoms of the prominent myosin of either sora, syphilis, and psychosis, which we have to look look into. So this will be only known to a knowledgeable physician. We have learned from a study from this chapter in psychosis, the disease or symptoms that follow infection are dependent upon the stage, age or time of the infection. So the psychotic uh, disease, whatever symptoms are followed, they are dependent upon the stage. So what stage of the disease the myosin is in, what is the age or the time of infection, all that will decipher the symptoms of the psychotic myosin. Thus, we must be conversant about symptoms in different stages of each myosin. So again, Dr. J. J. Allen reminds us that we must be conversant or we must know the different symptoms in the different stages of each myosin. Therefore, we can distinguish one stage from the other stage. So that's all for this part. Please be stay tuned for more. Part 3 will be coming up soon. Hope you enjoy the video. Thank you.